Yeah, black light. Now this is something else that's uh, beginning to disturb the black community. Ain't nothing changed, they just elevated the game, that's all. And uh, let's get into this and then I'll comment afterwards. Seems like we are talking about these viral videos of people of color dealing with calls to police for ordinary non-criminal things every day. In the past few days, stories surfaced about Native American students attending a college tour reported by a suspicious parent. A black grad student who fell asleep in a common area in her dorm reported by a white fellow grad student. And a group of friends who were detained by police while they were checking out of their Airbnb rental reported by a white neighbor uh, of the homeowner and the Airbnb guests and their lawyer are calling on Rialto police to hold the caller accountable. Joining me now to discuss filmmaker Kelly Fife Marshall, activist and filmmaker Denisha Prendergast, and artist Komi Olafemihan and their attorney Jasmine Rand. Good to have all of you with us uh, this morning. Good to be here with this morning. Uh, so, Denisha, first let's start here. This was uh, last Monday, April 30th. You were checking out of this Airbnb, and it seemed, you know, pretty normal, packing things up. And then what happened? Wow. <laughs> and then out of nowhere, police cars swooped down on us from before, in front of us and behind us. Um, it was kind of surreal. And you too. didn't know that anything was out of the ordinary until the police car showed up? No, we, we can't say anything was out of the ordinary. When, when I came out, we were packing our vehicle, and Kelly indicated to me, she said, you know, look over that lady over there. And the lady was standing on her front lawn, looking over at us with her hand akimbo, and her hand to her phone. And she said, you know, she's probably going to call the police. And I kind of just scoffed at it and went back inside, mm. because why would she, you know? And so said, so done. The, the reality is we were black people in a white neighborhood, and that was enough to call the police. When you say that uh, she's probably going to call the police and you asked why, we do have actually sound uh, released by the Rialto Police Department. An officer went to her, and she said that she was scared, and here's the explanation from her why she was scared. Let's listen. Well, I walked out here and you know, just to check the mail, I see these strange people coming in and going back and forth. You know, the luggage, and I didn't recognize them. What, what made you think they were trained? Uh, because they had luggage in their hand, and they weren't really looking at me. Mm -hmm. You know, they just kind of avoided me, or they didn't wave, you know, what neighbors you know, they And I noticed uh, the couple that uh, were in there that owned the house, and I didn't recognize them. Now, that might have been a little difficult to hear, Comey. I, I, I assume you've heard it before when the police released it. She said that uh, they didn't wave, you know, like neighbors. What's, what's your reaction to that from that homeowner? Um, well, I, before, before Comey starts, I want to make some... See... The strategy that black people use, and you know, they think, well, we're going to get it out to the media, and people are going to be concerned about it and take it to our public officials, and something can be done. But again, we're dealing with the police, right? It's a, a trend. Or it could be a war tactic to terrorize black people now. And we don't understand that it's been going on for 400 and some change years. It, 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 it varies in intensity. I don't care if you got cameras on them, they're still, they're still shooting you, you know, you're still getting shot, you're still getting harassed, you know, 
And it's been white women that's been doing this, uh, calling the police on people that they see, blacks that they see in, uh, on their territory, in what they think is their territory. So this is telling you this is war. Now, this is why networking comes in handy, and this is why you, you need allies to help you fight this war. In the meantime, you got uh, scandals like R. Kelly, and then you got Young Pharaoh and Sadie and Sadella and them taking us off our game. You got to be focused if you're going to win this. But then again, Maybe they don't want to win. Maybe their job is to get you off base so they can throw you out. But you got to pull your resources and you got to organize and you got to strategize. Otherwise, you're going to be in a worse condition that you was in uh, the past. Go a little bit more and then we gonna come back in another video. Thing very clear that ahead, Jasmine, you know yeah. this this is only a, a part of the video footage that has been released we look forward to receiving the full 911 tapes which we have not received yet mm -hmm. that we requested over a week ago um, from the Rialto Police Department the other thing that I want to make very clear is that the police officers arrived on the scene and actually informed them that this neighbor called and reported that there were three black people stealing stuff now, if that's not what this woman said, then that's a real disconnect. It's actually a lie on behalf of the Rialto Police Department. And, and that goes more to the, the... So... What we need to do... But I know y'all not going to listen to me. But Detroit... I'm up in Detroit, old school black light, 72, 72 years old, in Detroit back in the late 50s, 60s, we had that uh, 67 rebellion. I'm going to describe to you how all that took place. Now, I'm not advising us to have that a rebellion. I'm not advising us to protest and march because we've been doing that same thing for a hundred years and we haven't gotten any results. So we got to change our game plan. And we could use social media to do it, to network. But first I'm gonna, <clears throat> in the next video, I'm gonna give you a history of what led up to the 67 Rebellion. The real reason. I'm gonna start off with it but I'm gonna finish up in another video back in 1956 I moved from the east side to the west side over on Finkel and this boxed in between Dexter Linwood Finkel and Davidson in that area and we were about the only blacks 
There might have been one other black on my block, on the street, between Finkel and Bork. There were maybe two, two block, two, I mean two, two more families, black families. That whole area was predominantly white. I had to go to a school called Custer. It's now called Thurgood Marshall. When I graduated from Custer, I would be going to a school called Post Junior High. Now, Custer was elementary school. And after I leave Post Junior High, graduate from Post Junior High, I would be graduating and going to a school called Mumford. You may have seen uh, Eddie Mur Murphy wearing the Mumford uh, logo on his uh, sweatshirt in Beverly Hills Cop. But uh, when I went to Custer, it was predominantly Caucasian, and blacks were just moving in in that in that particular vicinity. They didn't like it. They had a couple of white gangs in the neighborhood. The white gang's fathers were police officers. Some of their fathers were policemen. In those days, they used to walk the beat. I, I see I'm not going to be able to finish up. So we're going to come back a little later on and finish up on this one. Look forward. This is Black Light.